It's breaking news that doesn't just affect college football. This is college basketball. This is several other sports as well. USC and UCLA planning to leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten. Now, the Big Ten has not had an NCAA men's basketball champion since Y2K. It was Michigan State back in 2000. They're going to be adding, likely, USC and UCLA, a team that made the, the Final Four uh, a couple of years ago. Actually, just last year, USC made the Elite Eight a couple of years ago. So let, let's take a look at the college hoops impact here. We know football moves everything, but if there's a number two, it's men's college basketball. So let's bring in Adam Finkelstein, who covers college basketball at 24-7 Sports. Adam, uh, w what's the immediate impact here on college basketball with more shuffling of the deck and the Pac-12 uh, going down to 10 and the Big 10 moving to 16? Well, I think it's mostly about the, the Pac-12 because this is a conference that in the NCAA tournament over the last five to eight years has, has had an inconsistent record. And there's been a lot of talk about you know, how good college basketball is on the West Coast versus the East Coast. And this is only going to add uh, to that to that dialogue. And so I think the, the future of the Pac-12 conference and the repercussions in terms of what you see people like Arizona and Oregon, schools like that, that from a basketball perspective are exceptionally significant, not just on the West Coast, but nationally, what happens to those programs and, and what they do uh, to kind of retaliate or, or consider moves of their own is certainly some of the buzz right at the moment. Adam, how helpless are these major college basketball programs like Arizona in the Pac-12? You've got Kansas in the Big 12. When, when colleges, universities, conferences, TV networks are basically saying college basketball doesn't matter. This is all football driven. Well, there's an East Coast precedent for basketball schools to have a path to survival, and that's the Big East Conference, because the Big East has made themselves a basketball-centric conference, and they've been able to survive realignment because of it, even getting schools like UConn back. So when you go, you know, when you trace this, the roots of realignment to the very beginning, so much of it uh, was schools departing the Big East for the ACC in football-centric moves. But again, the Big East kind of rallied around. Initially, it was those Catholic seven schools. They dubbed themselves. They brought in three basketball heavy hitters. Um, and then that you saw them bring back UConn in a move where UConn kind of sacrificed their football program to a certain extent in order to rejoin the Big East and concentrate on their basketball roots. So I do think there's a precedent on the East Coast. It's going to be interesting to see if it's the Pac-12 or someone else on the West Coast that that kind of takes on uh, a similar model and tries to replicate what the Big East has been able to do uh, on the East Coast. Yeah, and you've got uh, the, the team out there that, you know, not known for football at all. I don't even think has a football team, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who've been the best college basketball team regular season-wise right. the last, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 years. Uh, Adam Finkelstein is with us here as we digest the news that USC and UCLA are likely moving on to the Big Ten and are looking to finalize that move and could begin play as early as two years from now in the Big Ten. Uh, Adam, what does this do for the Big Ten in particular, which has been so maligned over the last 20 years? We think they have a great, great conference one year, and they go into the tournament and they just can't get it done. Yeah, they've been great from November to February. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. So I think you know, listen, they, they've got two more teams here that have that have had postseason success that are going to be in a position to challenge for national championships. And I think it what it does for their branding and, and the, their the member schools who are already in the league and their ability to recruit nationally, it's only going to elevate that. The other reality, though, is and we've seen this in realignment, there's going to be some negative repercussions for schools at the bottom of the conference. There's also going to be some some positive um, implications for schools, you know, now maybe at the top of the Pac-12, because not everybody can be a star in their conference. Think about a school, you know, I talked about the Big East earlier. Think about a school like Providence. Nobody benefited more than Providence in the Big East after all those schools left to go to the ACC. So it's going to be interesting to see if somebody emerges on the West Coast similar to that and even within the Big Ten, it, it's it would be it's an oversimplification to say this is great news for everybody in the Big Ten. That's not necessarily the case. There are going to be some that are going to end up kind of rising, uh, rising up to be the cream of the crop. There's going to be others that kind of sink back down and have a harder time keeping up with the masses. So that's going to be a very interesting dynamic to follow, because I just don't think 
it's there's always levels within each individual conference. UCLA, uh, maybe the basketball program in college basketball history, moving conferences more than likely with the news today that UCLA and USC are, are working on a deal to move to the Big Ten Conference and begin play as early as the 24 season. Adam Finkelstein with us here on HQ. You can read more from him at 24-7 Sports. And it's a place to be right now.